Hey, what's up guys, it's Master Conics here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to build an effective storage unit. Now this design I actually picked up from a fellow YouTuber, his name is Waddles, his channel is gonna be linked down below. And so the design that he has de developed is a circular pattern. So what we're actually gonna be looking at today is that design itself, and we're gonna kind of make a few modifications ourselves. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start off with, we're actually gonna be building a circle, like I said, and it's gonna be 19 wide. So we're gonna start off with five right here, and we're gonna come over two, we're gonna come over two again, and we're gonna go this way with two, and then build it back out two. And then on this side, we are going to do five again, three, four, five. And then we'll continue this pattern all the way around. So once you're done with that, it should look something like this. Now you are able to use any kind of building blocks you want. I'm gonna be using a mix of stone and wood today. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna raise all this up by one again, and then we're going to continue filling in the floor. Now we're gonna be filling in the floor and I'm gonna be using sandstone because I personally enjoy the texture of sandstone. And as you can see, there's a nice little texture and it's kind of light and will brine up the area once you're inside of it. So once we're done with the floor, we're actually, what I recommend is go ahead and start putting in the chest. This whole building is gonna hold 108 chests. So if that's not enough chest for you guys, I don't know what to tell you. However, this design is expandable. You can go up higher, you can make a second floor, or you can dig it further into the ground if you want to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna place our chest like this, all the way across. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a staircase and we have to use a staircase because otherwise the chest will not open. And so we can still open it and that way we can actually put item frames for the items that are in these chests. So we are going to do this three tall. And then we're going to come back and I'll show you where else we're going to be placing this chest. Once you're done with that, this is what it should actually look like. 15 chests total. Now, the reason why we haven't actually put up the walls yet is because it's a little bit easier to navigate around these chests without the walls actually up. So that's why I recommend it. The next step what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna place two more chests right here and we're gonna continue up. Now we're gonna skip this section right here and we're gonna pile in our next two. And the reason why is our entrances is gonna be on all four corners of this. Now, if you don't want access on all four corners, you could just choose one corner or two corners. Or if you want to take out 15 chests, you can make this whole section right here an entrance to yours. However, I want as many chests as possible, so we're going to be entering from the four corners. All right, so now we're going to continue going back and placing all of our chests around the perimeter. Now that we've got all of our chests in, you can actually see this whole entire room set up. Now, one thing I do recommend is using or utilizing item frames. Now, if you don't have access to ways to get leather, you could always put signs on them, but I recommend definitely using the item frames. It will just make things a whole lot easier as you're going through and trying to find the thing. It's a lot easier to see the actual block itself. So if I had stone, put there and I could have put regular stone there and it would be super easy to find and distinguish the type of item that is going to be in this chest. 
All right, now that we've got all of our chests set up, we've got 108 chests set in here. So now we actually need to design the outside. And so let's go ahead and get started with that. So with designing the outside, you can use any block variant that you want, whether that's stone, wood, sandstone, whatever it may be, you are more than welcome to use it. I'm, like I said earlier, I'm going to be using stone. So I'm going to be raising all of this up by one and kind of making it as if it is the foundation. I'm going to build up with stone brick. I just think it looks actually really good and it'll kind of make this look like a fortified structure in a way, like a solid structure. So we're going to keep placing stone brick all the way around just until we get about to the top. Now that we've got the walls all the way so they're flush with the tops of these staircases, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to raise it up two more. And the reason why we're going to raise it up two more is for me personally, I want to put a glass dome on this and I think that will look really cool and so we need to raise it up just a little bit more. Might be asking yourself how the heck are we supposed to get in here it's all walled off and so the entrances are actually going to be right over here and you can either leave them too open or you can open this up all the way now you can open up all four if you want access to all four sides or you could put one entrance off to this in one area and then each of these corners you could actually break off and make it's super modular and have a smelting room. You could have a crafting room and you could even have like an enchantment room and or a potions room. Now you could have all four of those if you knocked out one of these walls right here and took away 15 chests. Now, I again, I like all my chests, so I'm not gonna do that in this video, but that is an option that you guys can do. All right, so now that we've got the entrances put in, we are going to come across here with some oak, or in my case, spruce um, logs. And we are going to fill in all the tops because what might be kind of really cool is you could actually decorate up here once you're done with either items and make it kind of like a museum, or you could put just like um, armor holders or statues up top so you can actually put stuff and make it look a little bit more interesting that's something we're going to do in this video as well so we're going to fill in any gaps that we might have with any kind of block variant i'm going to be using spruce planks today and we're going to fill that in and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to raise this up one more level. So back to where you guys were, it's actually going to be bumped up by three instead of two. So now that we've got that going, what you guys might be asking yourself is, wow, this looks really plain on the outside. We will be decorating this. Um, however, we're going to continue working on the dome. And so you can use any kind of block you want for the dome. I'm going to be using glass because I personally gla like glass. And we're going to start raising it up and making a dome roof. So we've got our dome put on and now let's add some functionality to this actual area. So we're going to find the center of this room and we're going to mark it and we're actually going to find put a crafting table right in the middle. 
and part of this is for like the functionality of the room we can actually put furnaces or any kind of furnace variant whether that's a smoker or a blast furnace or whatever it may be you can put those on all four sides that way once you actually have the material you only have to run one little area just like a couple of squares just to access any of the materials that you might need um, you can also put it in a stone cutter if you want it as well so you can put it in the stone cutter and that way you have quick easy access to furnaces and a crafting table and a stone cutter all in one area um, so now you might need to actually light this area up and so what i recommend one of my favorite blocks of you i use is actually pumpkins and when i mean pumpkins i mean jack-o-lanterns um, they're super cheap you don't need you can make an automatic pumpkin farm pretty easy go ahead there should be a video up or will be out later about um, how to make a pumpkin farm as well so let's go ahead and put into get jack-o-lanterns out and let's grab some carpet as well whatever kind of carpet you want i'm going to do red red is one of my favorite colors so we're going to be using that and we're just going to place in our pumpkins in. So now realistically, this whole entire process is done. The only thing left that we have to do is to actually decorate the area and, and then to fill in the chest. And filling in the chest, one tip that I do have is keep all similar materials in the same area. So if you got stone, put stone with stone. If you got dirt and green stuff, put green stuff somewhere else. However you want to organize it, but make sure that you're not having to go across the rooms for like stone and then like anything else that you might need that would be commonly used with those materials so go ahead and put similar materials that you would be using in the same area and that's going to just make this whole process even more efficient so let's go ahead now and work on the outside and designing it a little bit better so once we've placed those fences we're going to put them up one more and what we're going to do is an upside down stair right here and then a regular stair right here now from there we're going to take strips oak and we're going to take it all the way up so we're going to do that so now that we've got our strip wood up we're going to put slabs on top of it like that and we're going to come across just like this replace that one and then we're going to come down up and then down so then we're going to take this block out right here which allows us to see through and we're going to put a little glass pane in there now on either side of this we want to continue this look up so we're going to take our strip wood again upside down staircase like this and we can put a bucket of water in it as if there is a little pond coming out of here and so we're going to go ahead and work on that so that's what our pond will start to look like but what we're going to do is we're going to dig it down as well and we're going to fill in all those blocks with water as well so you can decorate the size however you want or the environment around it however you want however you see fit whether you want to have it as lava coming out to make it kind of a dark eerie theme or you could just do a light airy theme with like a garden so what we need to do make sure is we're actually making this area able to get easily accessible um, so what i like to do is i just like to put a little slabs right here so we can come up so now we're inside we're going to decorate the inside just a little bit we'll place in all the windows that should be there so something cool that you could do up top is you can make it as like a little area where you could put armor stands and decorate it with armor as well as whatever entrance that you plan on coming in the most you can set up a little armor stand next to it so you can just take off your armor when you come in and we can keep decorating all around with different things we're going to put some bookshelves up here as well and maybe a lectern or two we'll, we'll see So I think this is probably one of the best builds that you guys can actually have in your single player world or even on a server. It's super efficient. You actually have access to 108 chests for all the different kind of items you could ever possibly need. It looks pretty good. You can decorate the outside however you want. It's expandable so if you want more chests you can 
expand the diameter to be more than just 19. Um, you can actually add on to these different wings here instead of just having four entrances and you could put something modular in there, whether that's an enchantment room, a potions room, or a, a smelting room. All of it is up to you and how you want to decorate it. And same thing with the outside. While that is just bland and ugly, you can decorate however you want. And my personal favorite was how we did it over here and kind of created this little garden area. So go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe down, down below. I'm going to be making more tutorials on different things that you can build and different things that's going to help you out in your Minecraft server, guys. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. Go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe button down below. I'm going to be releasing more tutorials in the future about different kinds of builds that you can make, and that will be helpful. Different tips, vi tip videos, and everything along the line. So you won't want to miss out. So go ahead and definitely make sure you subscribe. And until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a good one.